When I was 19, I worked at my local guitar center and gave lessons to kids in my free time. One afternoon, a man in his late 50s came up and asked me if I could give a lesson to his 12-year-old daughter. I said yes, and eagerly gave him my email address so that he could contact me to set up a schedule for his kid. He sent me emails constantly. It started off with just saying, Hi, how are you? several times a day, and eventually led to him giving me his number. He said it would be easier to talk on the phone to set up a lesson. By then, alarms were already going off in my head. I sent him a text asking him to please leave me alone if he wasn't serious about the lessons. A big mistake. Now, he had my number and the calls and texts were incessant. I just want to talk, and I've been thinking about you, were the messages that he'd leave me. I once again asked him to leave me alone and blocked him completely. But then, he started calling me at work. My job was to check in guitars and answer phones, so he was able to reach me every single time. I always hung up when I realized it was him, but he would call back almost immediately. If I happened to be busy and someone else picked up the phone, he would ask for me directly. It was intense. I was afraid to tell my boss because it was my first job and I was pretty much responsible for making sure the customers left feeling happy. I also thought that since I had willingly given the guy my information, that that would work against me and it would be my word versus his. I deleted the text and emails after I blocked him, so there was no proof. Even though I obviously did not consent to being harassed, I thought it was my fault. Things got really scary one night when I ran into him in the parking lot. He approached me and told me that he was waiting for me and just wanted to talk. I got out at the same time every day, so it was easy for him to guess my schedule. Thankfully, I'd called my dad before my shift ended and he agreed to pick me up. My dad was waiting in the parking lot as well. I ran straight towards my dad's car, and I asked him to drive off immediately. I explained everything that had happened, and my dad called the police. They couldn't do anything since the creep never directly harmed me, but I did tell my boss and the guy was banned from the store. I never saw or heard from him again, but I still think about how lucky I was from time to time. I wasn't very popular in high school, and a lot of people didn't like me because of rumors, so rarely I had friends from my class. After the whole bullying, I decided to sign up for French class to avoid drama. The first day of French class, I made friends with a girl named Alyssa. After a few weeks of being friends with Alyssa, I started to notice how weird she was acting and I was about to ask what's wrong with her when she put her hands over my mouth and threw me into some bushes. I was about to yell when she told me to shut up and of course I was confused. She later sighs of relief and I asked what's wrong. She then shamelessly tells me that she has a stalker and she has been having this stalker since the beginning of the year. And that's why she doesn't have friends, because he becomes her friend's stalkers too. I held her hand and told her I wouldn't leave her side, no matter what, and that made her happy. Once after the stalker talk, we made a group of friends and we called it the fam squad. I know, cringe. And we would hang out almost every day. I never really noticed the stalker until he showed up to places we would go. The thing is, nobody told him. 
He would show up to our friend Sebastian's house and pool. He kept stalking all of us, buying gifts, buying food for us, randomly photo bombing us, and drawing creepy pictures of us. Especially of Alyssa and him being together. I later found out he had a hard drive of pictures of Alyssa and I and everyone else was cut off, had a huge red X on their faces. The day I will always remember was the 4th of July. Sebastian invited all of us over to his house to celebrate by swimming, lighting fireworks, and cooking hamburgers and hot dogs. I was in charge of chips and drinks for everyone else. Our friend Daniel was supposed to bring hamburger meat, but he forgot. But lo and behold, Lewis pops out of the bushes with hamburger meat. Everyone was freaked out and asked if anybody told him about our plans, and we all said no. We were hungry, so we accepted the hamburger meat, and everybody was going fine, until Alyssa made the announcement of her and Daniel dating. Everyone was happy, but I looked at the stalker and he was glaring at Daniel, and I knew he was up to something. After eating, everybody decided to relax except for Daniel and I. We jumped into the pool together, but I was at one end and Daniel was at the other end. I popped up from the water, but I didn't see Daniel. At first, I thought he was swimming towards me to pick me up and throw me back in the water, and I decided to put on goggles to beat him to it. But what I saw was something unexpected. Daniel was swimming towards me, and halfway, the stalker jumped into the pool on top of Daniel and stepped on him, not letting him get up. And I could see the fear in Daniel's eyes. I started to swim towards Daniel and tried to move his legs off him, but I wasn't strong enough. I started to panic and seeing Daniel lose his breath, then I decided to bite the stalker's leg, and of course he yelped and took his legs off of Daniel. I swam up to the surface with Daniel and gave him mouth to mouth. Luckily for Daniel, he coughed out all the water and started to breathe. He hugged me, and everybody asked what happened. We told him that the stalker did this, but before we could chew out the stalker, he was gone. Ever since that day, we hadn't seen the stalker, but I will never forget how he almost murdered someone. I live in a small town in the UK and had to get the bus into work every day. I was around 18 at the time. Every morning whilst I was waiting for a bus, another one would turn up doing a different route and stop for about 10 minutes as it was always early. I had been using the stop for about two years. One morning at the bus stop, I noticed a girl around my age on the parked bus who just kept staring at me. She had her phone camera towards me and knew most people on there were never busy and it was early on the route. I thought it was a bit strange but figured that she had her phone in a weird position, so I just ignored her. However, over the next couple of weeks, I would see her irregularly on the bus, but she was always looking at me and had her phone pointed at me too, holding it at a low height as if trying to hide it. The first few times I just kept ignoring it and maybe thought my hair was weird today or maybe my makeup. This continued for the next few weeks of her turning up and watching me. Even when I sat on the opposite side of the bus, eventually I had enough and was getting creeped out. I started to generally believe that maybe she was videoing me or taking pictures. One morning I decided to get my phone out, direct it at her, and pretend to video. I made eye contact with her and pointed at my phone. She put her phone away and didn't look at me again. The weirdest part is, I continued to see her on the bus for another year, and she never did that again after that. Okay, so this story happened like two years ago. For a little background, I have autism. 
and when I turned 18, my mom told me she couldn't take care of me anymore, so she sent me to a sort of group home for people with autism. It was a tiny one-story building with about eight apartments for each person. My first day there, it was pretty clear that I was one of the high-functioning people there, and it seemed like I was the youngest, too. My mom stayed with me the first night to help me get settled, and two guys who lived there kept walking up to my door, just looking. Me, being used to being around socially awkward people, like myself, didn't really think much of it, although I really hated the attention. I didn't want to talk to them, and after about two hours, they gave up. My mom said that they were sweet and just curious as to who was moving in, but I wasn't in the mood to socialize. Fast forward to me living there a couple of weeks. I'm sitting in my very tiny living room watching TV when I see a shadow outside my window. My window was placed beside the main entrance, so I could always hear and see people walking by. My blinds were on, though, but... I could still see the shadow since the main entrance had lights on all night. So, I started looking away from the TV, just looking at the shadow by the window. The person stood there for about five minutes, and then walked away, or so I thought. Then I saw the shadow sort of duck behind a wall, but still try to look into my window, and that was when I got kind of freaked out. The next day, I tell the people working in the group home, and they're like, Oh, it's probably just Eric. He does that sometimes. And I'm sort of like, Huh? I would appreciate if he didn't, because it freaks me out. They just said something along the lines that they would talk to him about it, and I agreed. Fast forward again to having been here for months... It's a daily occurrence that this Eric guy walks past my front door and front windows 40 times a day, and walking past four times in four minutes. My door is made of glass, so again, he can see through it. Sometimes I walk out of my living room and I see Eric just standing at my door and staring at me. It's the most unsettling thing. At this point, I've told the staff multiple times, but... They say they can't really do anything, and that he's harmless. Right. At one point, though, Eric is gone and I'm relieved to finally being comfortable with having my blinds up and walking around in my own apartment. So, probably a year into living there, maybe less, I get really depressed. It wasn't the best place to live and I've never felt so lonely in my life. I end up attempting suicide, and they put me in a mental hospital for a couple of days so I can be watched. Well, guess who's there too? Freaking Eric. He notices me right away, and every time a nurse tries to walk into my room, he stands by the door staring at me. They have to keep telling him to go away. One time... I had to wash my clothes with one of the nurses, and he followed us yelling so everyone could hear it. Hey, that girl lives where I live. Hi, Michelle. Her name is Michelle. And being the type of person that hates attention, I just started walking faster until the nurses can get a hold of him. So, at this point, I'm actually in an okay mental state. I'm still not in the best place to live with neglecting staff and crappy people all around me. Eric is back too at one point, and honestly, I haven't been outside because I'm afraid I'll run into him. His apartment isn't even on my side, so it makes no sense why he's there all the time. I've noticed it's been quiet out there for a while, so I decide it's safe to go down to the basement with my laundry. I turn the corner and, boom, almost bumped into him. I kind of freak out, but I remember he is still just a person, and I politely give him a smile and say, hi. He doesn't say anything. He just stares. 
I then walk past him on the way up to the basement. I look back, and he's seriously following me now. He actually turned around to follow me. I start walking faster, and I thank God that I have the key for the basement ready. I open the door and shut it quickly so that I know it's locked. I walk into the laundry room with my laundry, and then I hear the door open. I froze. Was he going to kill me? I mean, I didn't even know the guy or what he was capable of. Three or so minutes go by, and I finally get the courage to peek out from the room. The door is open, but he's nowhere to be seen. It seems that he's gone. It scared the lifeless crap out of me, so I hurried up and put my clothes in the washing machine and hurried back up to my apartment. Again, I speak to the staff, and this one guy is actually really helpful. He's the first to take me serious and says they need to fix it. I know that they talked to him about it, and also about standing by my window, but do you think he listened? To describe Eric, I would say he's a very tall guy. I couldn't really tell if he was skinny or chubby because he was always wearing a big green jacket. He had glasses, was hunched over sort of, and had long dark greasy hair. So yeah, basically nightmare fuel to any girl. Okay, I know that I sound like an a-hole, but I am a very tiny girl, and I knew that if he tried anything, I wouldn't stand a chance. So now, it's the norm again to see him at my window. Although when the staff tells him to stop, he just laughs very childlike. He thought it was funny, I guess. It annoyed the hell out of me, and I went from being scared to being super angry. I know he had issues, but damn. I had issues too, and he was not helping me with my anxiety. He actually made it worse. I told the staff that if he ever tried anything, I would beat the living hell out of him. Aggressive, I know. I was short, yes, but I was angry too. They told me that wasn't allowed, and... I reminded them that him looking into my windows and following me around wasn't allowed either. They agreed, but told me again that there was nothing they could do. I seriously considered calling the police at this point. The last thing he did that really made me angry was he walked past my door and windows many, many times, as always, but then I realized he was gone. I sighed in relief, but... I still had that feeling I was being watched. My eye caught movement outside, and this freaking dude was hiding behind a tree outside my apartment, watching me. When he saw me, he grinned and moved closer. I walked into the living room not wanting to deal with this crap and I called my boyfriend. My boyfriend stayed at my apartment pretty much every day from then on, and he stopped for a while. I think he even asked the staff if that was my boyfriend, and they told him yes. He still walked past our door sometimes, but not as often, and not as creepily. Thankfully, we moved out about a year later, and I haven't seen him since. But it made me very cautious and very dependent of my boyfriend. I know he probably didn't have bad intentions, but it really messed up my mental state, and it really scared me. So when I was eight, my brother told me a story that took place when I was three. My mom was doing laundry, and me and my brother were playing with toys when we heard a blood-curdling shriek. We run to see what was happening, and we see a tall man staring through our sliding glass door. Motionless, my mom grabbed me and my brother and pushed us into the closet. She called her brother to come over. Context, her brother is very big, jacked with muscles. Anyway, after ten minutes, her brother arrived and chased the creep into the woods. The creepiest part is he stood there for 10 minutes straight, 
just staring. 